In the previous lesson, we explored the role of the government in project finance and introduced the PPP model as a key approach to funding infrastructure projects around the world. Today, we're focusing on a new topic, revenue models in public-private partnerships. It's important to understand that there are several ways the private party can be compensated, depending on the structure of the partnership. So, when we talk about revenue models, we're really asking, how does the private partner, the one who builds, operates, and possibly owns the infrastructure, earn revenue to cover costs, repay debt, and generate a return for investors? In this lesson, we'll cover the two main types of revenue models, along with a hybrid model that blends the two. The first model is the model where end user pays the private party, which is also referred to as a concession model. The second model is where the government pays the private party. This is the model in which the government makes the availability payment, which sometimes referred to as a project agreement. And the third revenue model is where we have a mixture of the availability payment model and the concession agreement. For example, the project company may be given a concession to collect end user fees from the services provided by the infrastructure, while at the same time, the government makes availability payments and may also co-finance the project. In today's world, it's rare to see a pure government pay or end user pay model. Typically, we see a hybrid model. However, it is important to understand some of the key distinctions between these two revenue models. First, let's take a look at the end user pays model. In this model, the off-taker is an end-user. The government concedes the right to collect the revenue to the private company, which builds and operates the infrastructure project. Obviously, in this type of model, the revenue risk rests with the project company since it is collecting revenue directly from end-users. So, in situations where revenue projections are reliable, depending on the jurisdiction where the project is located and other factors that support those projections, these types of projects may be considered bankable from the lender's point of view. Often, especially in developing countries, a concession agreement is accompanied by government guarantees, which can take different forms. For example, the government may guarantee to fill the gap between projected and actual revenue, covering any shortfall, or the government may provide a minimum revenue guarantee to the project company or some other form of support just to ensure that the cash flow the project company is supposed to receive is guaranteed. This guarantee is backed by the government, which is typically a creditworthy authority, and if such a guarantee is in place, it helps make the project bankable. And on top of collecting revenue from end users, typically the project company is also given the right to collect some supplemental revenue. For example, in a toll road project, the company may also operate a gas station or multiple gas stations along the toll road. Or in the case of a school, the project company may operate a cafeteria. These types of activities add an additional income stream to the core revenue of the project. In a government pays model, the government is the off-taker. The government makes an availability payment to the project company, and these payments are made throughout the life of the contract. Those availability payments will be based on some type of metrics. For example, in the case of a power plant, the payment would be based on the available capacity of the plant, measured in megawatts. If we're talking about other projects, such as a hospital, the payments would be based on other metrics that indicate the level of project functionality during a specific period of time. The availability payment is calculated in such a way that it covers both variable and fixed costs. Again, it has to be sufficient to cover operating costs, as well as the repayment of debt the interest on that debt, and the repayment of investment along with the return on that investment. There might be revenue from end users in this type of project, and it is either passed on to the government or shared with the project company. As we mentioned earlier, it's very rare today to see a pure end user pays or government pays model. Typically, we see a mixture of models where the government may combine a concession agreement with an availability payment or a concession agreement with co-financing, or any other arrangement that the government considers beneficial for the project 